Pretty crispy. Are you guys getting that? Hey, what's up? So the third recipe video I ever made on this channel was for a sheet pan pizza. And the recipe itself is really pretty good, but the video sucked like a lot. Please don't watch it. So I like the recipe and it definitely deserves better. And since then I've made some improvements on it and made it more efficient. So sheet pan 2.0, here we go. To get started, I'm gonna grab my stand mixer and into the bowl of that, I'm gonna measure 285 grams of warm water, seven grams of instant yeast, 20 grams of olive oil, 425 grams of strong all-purpose flour. As a reminder, mine is 11.7% protein. If you can't get all-purpose flour this strong, I would suggest bread flour for you. And then finally, eight grams of salt goes in and the dough hook goes on and then so does the mixer. I'm gonna mix this on low speed for about three minutes or until everything has come together into a cohesive mass like this. Then the speed's gonna go up to high and I'm gonna continue to mix this for six more minutes. Surely you could mix this by hand or with a food processor if you've got one of those and not a stand mixer but I've shown that process quite a bit lately so I'm gonna put a link in the description to a video where I give a lot more detail on hand mixed pizza after that six minutes on high speed this dough should be looking pretty well developed and should be slapping around the bowl like this to tell if that gluten has the strength it needs to stand up to fermentation and shaping later on we're gonna stretch it out to see if it shears and or tears and it does not so now we can call this pizza dough now the vessel I'm gonna be fermenting this dough in is just a little bit different than usual I've got this rectangular Tupperware type Type setup from the grocery store and I think it makes a lot of sense for this dough but we will see why that is later on for now I'm gonna oil it up spread that around and then transfer over my dough the lid goes on and now I'm gonna let this rise here on my cutting board for 30 minutes 30 minutes later this dough is gassed up quite a bit and it's looking good so now we're gonna fold in some additional strength for that I'm gonna grab the far end like this pull it out about 12 inches or so and then fold it back to the other side rotate the whole thing pull it out as far as you can then fold it back over I'm gonna do the same for the shorter ends by stretching and then folding them over the best I can and before I call this done I want to get all those folded seams tucked back under this dough so as it ferments it's gonna be sitting on them and that kind of seals in the folds which is a nice little detail that has made its way from the professional bakery into my home doughs okay that's tucked the lid goes on and we're gonna check back in 30 minutes 30 minutes later or 60 minutes since we mixed this dough we're gonna fold it one more time the same as before and if you're wondering hey Brad, why didn't we just mix this dough longer in the beginning wouldn't that have saved us from having to fold this so much well this dough is high hydration meaning that has a high water to flour ratio and for wetter doughs there is a real limit to how far you can develop that in a mixer adding these folds 30 minutes apart is going to allow us to raise the overall strength of this dough by layering the gluten and that makes for a much easier to handle easier to shape high hydration dough once it's all folded up like before the lid's going to go on and we're going to check back in 30 minutes while that rises let's make our tomato sauce for that i've got a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes once that's cracked open into a high side container it goes followed by seven grams of salt 10 grams of sugar half teaspoon of black pepper one teaspoon dried oregano half teaspoon chili flake one teaspoon dried basil i'm using volume here for these herbs because they're way below a gram and my scale doesn't go so low bro and then finally 50 grams of tomato paste my immersion blender is going to go in and then i'm going to puree this until it's relatively smooth and the more coarse herbs have had a chance to get broken down from their fish food size flakes into something that's not going to get stuck in your throat that's smooth. Now we're gonna cook this pizza sauce. So for that, I'm gonna preheat a medium saute pan over medium heat. And then once that's hot, in goes 25 grams of olive oil and then 15 grams or about two cloves of minced garlic. I'm gonna saute that for a few minutes to soften it up and to get my oil all aromatic and smelling like garlic. Once that's starting to get all golden brown around the edges, in goes my puree from just a second ago and we're gonna give that a stir to combine. Once stirred up, we're gonna turn the heat down to low and then simmer this sauce for about 20 minutes over low heat, stirring pretty often. 20 minutes later, this sauce has reduced by about 30 to 40 percent and when i push my spoon through it leaves a nice trail and holds itself up a super robust lightly sweet sauce like this is exactly what we need to help bind everything together on top of this pizza now i'm going to scoop this into something wide and flat to cool it down and then into the fridge it goes until it's pizza time back to the dough it's been 30 minutes since our last folder 90 minutes total since we mixed this thing and now it's looking all buoyant gassy and alive now a note about the vessel i recommend using a slightly shitty sheet pan like this one anecdotally for whatever reason having a lot of miles on this sheet tray really helps the dough not stick to it the last time i used a new sheet tray the pizza stuck to the bottom and i was really bumming the other thing i want to mention here is that these non-stick sheet pans should be used with caution they do not transfer the heat well to the pizza as you can see this got totally fried but if all you have is a teflon sheet pan you can still probably use it i would just bake it at 475 instead of 550 now to get the sheet tray ready for the dough i'm going to liberally oil it up 
up with about two to three tablespoons or 30 mils of olive oil. That's usually what works best for me. And make sure to spread that all over everything, including the sides and the corners. Stuck pizza is the worst thing ever. And this little bit of detailing along the corners and sides is gonna make a huge difference. From there, I'm gonna flip this dough over into the sheet pan. And now you can see why I chose this rectangular Tupperware. The dough is already in the shape of a sheet tray. To stretch this, I'm gonna oil up my fingers and then start to degas the dough. From there, we're gonna pull it out and start to spread this dough the best we can. But since we just oiled everything up, it's gonna slide around and getting it to move too far at this point is not gonna happen. That's okay, we're just getting things started. The dough needs to rest at this point. So I'm gonna cover it with another sheet tray and let it rest here on my cutting board for 15 to 20 minutes. While that rests, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Happy Cooking Cards. Happy Cooking Cards are chef-made recipe cards and art prints that are delivered monthly to your door. Each month you receive a recipe card and an art print for a recipe that's created around the current season. And they're released in a way to emphasize and celebrate the process of cooking and sourcing high quality seasonal produce when available. I really love this idea. Happy Cooking Cards focuses on slowing down and actually enjoying the entire process of cooking something special. And you get a cool little five by seven print to frame up and remember the entire experience. The recipes themselves come on cards that you can send in an envelope that also comes with the card and mail it to somebody that you like as a gift. And maybe next time you see them, they can have a good time making you that tomato tart that you thought looked so good. All around, I'm very happy to tell you guys about this brand. I think it's a really cool idea that's been well executed, especially for you guys out there who just love the entire process of cooking. So if you wanna give Happy Cooking Cards a try, click the link in my description and use the code Brian for 20% off your first order. Thank you very much, Happy Cooking Cards, for sponsoring this video. 20 minutes later, I'm gonna continue stretching this dough out into the pan. We're gonna start by degassing this again, then I'm gonna grab an end, pull it out, and stretch it as far as I can. I'm gonna repeat that on all sides until the dough really starts fighting me and snaps back to any movement that I make. From there, I'm gonna put the lid back on and come back in 15 minutes to finish stretching. After that 15 minutes, this dough has relaxed just enough to let me take it that last 20% all the way to the edges of the pan. At this point, I like to pull out the dough well over the edges and let it snap back to fill in the corners. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put the sheet tray back on to cover this and let it proof up while I preheat and set up the oven. For that, I'm gonna load one rack into the middle third because if it was too close to the firing element in the bottom, that would fry the dough in the pan way too hard. Behind that comes my pizza steel that's gonna hold onto and transfer heat into the pizza really well and also acts as a shield from any transient heat from the bottom of the oven. Once that's set up, I'm gonna preheat the oven to 550F or 176C. As soon as that oven's preheated, or about 20 minutes later, it's time to build. First thing down is thick sliced full fat mozzarella cheese. I like to shingle this from edge to edge to get full coverage. For me, that's about 12 slices or two thirds of a pound, 300 grams. Behind the cheese comes the sauce and I'm gonna drop that down in large dollops that are about two tablespoons or 25 grams a piece. As you can see, I'm laying this down in two rows, kind of like I would for a Detroit style pizza, but I am gonna be spreading it out kind of randomly because I find that having some cheese still exposed in the final pizza brings more contrast and I like it way better than the edge to edge spread that I did in the first sheet pan pizza video. Behind that sauce comes some more cheese. This is a fresh mozzarella and I'm adding in roughly 10 to 12 chunks and I'm tearing those chunks up so that they spread more when they melt. This fresh mozzarella is gonna bring a really light, milky freshness to kind of lighten the load of an otherwise pretty heavy pizza. Next goes down some thinly sliced pepperonis. For me, that's the standard starting point for pizza toppings, but there's always room to make it DIY and maybe throw in some pepperoncini doggies on there and make it a b-boy special. To finish this pizza, I'm gonna shower with a few generous handfuls of grated aged Parmesan cheese. I grated this stuff on the smallest hold sides of my box grater and it should look kind of like cheese gravel. That's the good pizza cheese right there. Try and avoid the feathery stuff. I wouldn't recommend microblading Parmesan cheese onto a pizza. That texture is better for putting on fresh after the bake. Okay, this pizza looks insane at this point, but we need to bake it. So into the preheated oven, it goes right onto the pizza steel. I'm gonna bake this for 18 to 20 minutes. Since this is a really big pizza and everyone's ovens are so different, I would say use my time and temperatures here as just a starting point and use your senses to decide what's gonna work best for you. Also, it's a good idea to come back at about the halfway point and turn this pizza 180 degrees and maybe check on the bottom to see how it's doing, make sure it's not getting stuck. That's not stuck. After 18 minutes, now it's time to take this pizza out of the box. This pizza looks great, but right off the bat, we're gonna flip up the bottom corner and see how it looks. Thanks to that pizza steel, we got this bottom well fried in the pan and it looks quite crisp. However, if yours isn't fully cooked and looking a little blondy on the bottom like this one, here's the move. The whole sheet tray goes on two burners on low over at the stove. Keep an eye on it, move it around, make sure the heat doesn't get too localized. And after about three to four minutes, you should have a nice crisp fried bottom on this pizza. 
You guys, this is what a pizza party looks like. The sheet pan pizza can be easily multiplied to make pizza for a ton of people at once. And it's really a party food. It's steamy, it's melty, it's got a nice open crumb, and it's crispy on the edges. I really hope you guys like the new version of this pizza and I hope you give it a try soon. Let's eat this thing.